Warrior of Africa, Super Bantamweight, the BPA Interim World Champion, BWTM Sports, subscribe. So we're at Brixton Rec with Paul Dogba and Isaac Dogba. That's Paul, let's, right. let's talk to Paul first, the father and trainer of Isaac. So tell us, Paul, how's it been? Um, well, as you know, Isaac is now fighting for the world title. Um, it's been a long road, you know, for this young chap. Yeah. Um, it's, it's very humble. He's done his pool, the working. That's how he got the world title fight against yep. a formidable opponent, Jesse Magdaleno. You know, um, it's going to be a great fight. You know, um, Magdaleno, as you know, he's tough. But when you have a guy like Isaac coming at you like a locomotive, you know, <laughs> I'll say um, a mad locomotive coming at you, crushing you down, that's when you're going to know that his only option is to either vacate the title and move up weight or get knocked out and we hold him and throw him over the fence of Mexico. Now we know that you're no stranger, both Isaac and Paul, to BWTM. It was Bayloric Oracle Wire TV. Then um, you did a live interview and many people spoke about how good you guys were together. They thought we were brothers. They actually thought we were brothers, not father and son. Your chemistry was so good. Now, after that, they saw your fight, Isaac. They were very impressed with your fight. Um, I believe that was on the undercard. I think, was it Joseph Parker that fought? Yeah. Talk to us about that fight. Let's go back to that fight for a second. Um, you know, it was a great fight, you know, um, being on the undercard of Joseph Parker and, and, um, and Ruiz. Look, the crowd was amazing. New Zealand was amazing. You know, everyone was, you know, everyone fell in love with Isaac Duggar and, you know, um, I really felt my fan base is really growing. You know, yep. we are getting to the global market. And mm -hmm. it's, it's been great. You know, we got that fight after we went to the, um, the BBO um, convention and um, we lobbied for the fight and we had to face Aristoli, you know, he was a Latino champion then. Right. So it was a, a very, um, you know, interesting fight. Because a guy, and not, again, find someone that was there, a giant, and that's me, just little Isaac, just looking up at him like that, you know. So it was, it was great, it was exciting. So we see the belt down there. There we go. I mean, this is this is in the belt I, I had in um, in New Zealand. Right. This is when I, I fought with, um, <coughs> excuse me, Cesar Juarez, a January 6th. Belt. Yeah, this is a higher version, higher belt than the previous. That was an international. Right. The BBO title. Uh, so title. this belt now, for people who don't know, this belt now, what is this, is this the, belt? The BBO Interim World Title. Oh, it's the Interim World Title. Yeah. You know, because as most people would know, Jesse McDelano was supposed to fight his mandatory challenger. Yes. That was his Juarez back then. Okay. You know, and um, that fight didn't come on. So when, again, he went to the, the BBO convention and lobbied to fight Cesar Juarez. You know, number two didn't want to fight him. And I was number three. So... We owned up and said, that, yes, we would, we would love to fight um, Cesar Juarez. And yeah, again, everyone doubted Isaac Dugby, saying that, you know, it was too early for me to fight Cesar Juarez. He's he too. The WBO president, you yeah. can the WBO president, yes. um, uh, Paco Bacasel said. Paco Bacasel was saying, look, this guy's a tough guy, he's a tough Mexican, Mexican look. Man. Look, he's a, he just keeps coming forward, he's strong, he's durable, he's going to keep coming at you. And then one thing he said to me, and I look, if you, Cesar Juarez is the toughest in the division. If you cannot beat Cesar Juarez, you cannot be a world champion. You know, after he said that, I said to him, you know, and I smiled and I said, I'll beat him. You know, and then I came back and look, my father was, um, I was on the phone with my father and said, yes, daddy, we've got the fight. This is it, you know, so yeah. And, Within ourselves, we knew we were going to knock him out, and with thanks to God, we did it. Fantastic. So you've got two flags. Dad's got one flag, and you've got another. The British flag. Talk to me about it. So let's talk about where, you, where you've like grown up and where, you know, a bit more about your background. You know, I was born in Ghana. Okay. You know, and I was raised in England. In okay. Great Britain. You know, this is where I started boxing from. This is where I had all my education. 
you know, and everything. So I always say as um, the queen and country has done great to me. Yes. You know, and um, everything that I do, I have to also pay my allegiance and my respect, you know, to the flag of Great Britain and also to the queen and her subjects. So, and her heirs, you know. Um, so in everything that I do, of course, I represented Ghana on the 20th of Olympic Games because the Olympic Games, I had to be part of it. Okay. You know, and at the time, four years prior to the Olympic Day, GB, Team GB had already done their selection and I wasn't even in boxing. Right. So as you can tell, um, my development was so quick that, okay. you know, I got to the elite level. So I just had to be part of it. So right. when I made the team, it was, you know, it was, it was, a, it was an unbelievable, like, you know, um, feeling. You know that 17 years old is the youngest participant, and um, you know the, the, the young boy in the men's, you know, competing in the, in the Olympics, 2012 Olympic Games, and you can tell everyone in my community was like, you know, in Lambeth, everyone at school, college, everyone was like, yes, oh, um, South um, South London kid has qualified for the Olympics. You know, he's from this school, he's from that school. Oh man, it was great. What was the experience for you being at the Olympics? Um. I mean, that was the biggest crowd I've ever fought in front. And they were so great and they were friendly. I came out of the, of the arena, I mean, I came out of the changing room, walking, you know, walking into the ring, and I was mad, I was actually marching into the ring. Because I fought for the, um, uh, I fought for the T and Army Boxing Club. Right. So I don't know, for some reason, I just came out marching into the ring and I could hear the, the cheers and everyone, you know, cheering me on and, you know, looking at me like, oh, it was great, it was amazing. So you consider yourself, although you're Ghanaian born, you still consider yourself a Brit. You see yourself as a Brit. Of course. What, why do you think people don't talk about you as much? Very talented boxer, going places, got a world title fight. Are we talking about you? Why? Well, look, because um, I've been, we've been on the road for about, yeah, for quite some time now. Mm -hmm. so, you know, six four, years. Yeah, six, six years, yeah. yeah. You know, so after I finished college, you know, my father and I moved to California, you know, and um, what well, my first fight was in Switzerland yep. and then Ireland. And then we moved to California and, you know, we're based there for a few yes. years mm. and, you know, had a few fights over there. Then my grandfather passed away. Yeah. So we went back to, we went to Ghana and um, we decided to, have, you know what, we looked at the state of boxing back then, yeah. like, you know what, we can do something about it. My father said, you know, let's let's have one fight. One fight turned to two, you know, and um, yeah, since then, right now we've revived boxing in Ghana. We have, um, I believe that we've done great to the people of Ghana, the great to the nation, the nation of Ghana and Africa. I'm a draw card in Africa now, you know, when I'm fighting the whole continent of Africa, everyone is, you know, is trooping in. Our last show, oh man, we couldn't, the arena couldn't um, take the people. Wow. So I, I would say it's, it's, it's all blessings. And um, right now, I believe that this is a time to get, get back to, to Great Britain, you know, to come back on the boxing scene, you know, to also um, get gather that momentum once again and, you know, get the crowd going. Because the fans here are, are also, you know, everyone keeps asking, oh, when are you going to come back? When are you going to fight in England? When are you going to fight in London? You know, so, yeah, now we are back. We're gonna set on um, December. Uh, sorry, September. I'll be going. To, I'll, I'll be going back to uni. You know. So, but right now the main focus is on Jesse McDelan on April 14th. It's gonna be a cracking fight. You know, Jesse is a great guy. He's a good fighter. He's a world champion. I respect him as that. But when we get into the ring, it's just me and him. Like I keep saying, I'm gonna knock him out, grab him by the leg, and throw him to a great. great Throwing over the Great Wall of Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> Dad, tell us more about Jesse, his style. How does Isaac go about this this job? He's, he's a tough guy, no, uh, shadow of uh, doubt. Jesse Magdaleno is a southpaw. Right. You know, it's very difficult um, to fight the southpaw. But then, when you watch the way Jesse fights, Isaac is the only one that can break Jesse. Because Isaac is not a boxer that only stands and fight. He can move forward and fight. He can move side to side and he can fight going back. He's an all-round boxer. Exactly. And then he's very skillful and he can bang. You know, some boxers are skillful, they can bang. And some can bang and they are not skillful. They don't have the sweet science in boxing. So this is a kid that is coming yeah, with all what 
you know, you can have in a champion. Yeah. You know, that's why in his early days, I used to call Regan Do out. Because I knew the only boxer that could beat Guillermo Regindo was Isaac Dogbe. And then still people were telling me I was what, um, delusional. <laughs> you know, but then when you watch the way Isaac fights, yeah, I always tell people the only chance you have is to run. Like if you're fighting a boxer that can knock you out with mm -hmm. one punch, mm -hmm. you don't want to stand in front of him and fight. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is to be running. You have to run in the mm -hmm. ring. You have to be like running and boxing. On the movement. On the movement. That's it. Lateral boxing. movement. Yeah. So I think that is the only chance that Jesse has to run like a chicken. And then if El you... El Pollo. Uh, you say, uh, um, El Pollo El Loco. El Pollo Loco. So Jesse Magdaleno has to do the El Pollo Loco dance and run like a chicken. That is the only... And he's going to spoil the fight. The Mexicans fans are going to love Isaac instead of him. Because they love people that will stand and fight. So if he says he's a real champion and he's got two, three cojones, because Isaac has three cojones, if he has three cojones, he has to stand and fight. Okay, I know this is your father. Your father's saying you've got three cojones. I'm uh, not going to show you though. <laughs> 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 if you're going to attack I'm not going to show you. So you have three cojones. Okay, so, so what made your father say it? And we've heard a lot of fathers say a lot of things about sons recently. Chris Eubank Jr. and his father, Senior, said a lot of things. We all know it's kind of gone pear-shaped. What makes it different between you two guys? What father and son? You're saying a lot of things. We've seen how good Isaac is yeah. already. Yeah. But what's the difference? See, I, I, the only thing I can say, right, um, sometimes I get so scared training my son, you uh -oh. know, because I, I, I feel uh, I've taken one, I've taken his childhood away from him mm -hmm. by, you know, putting him in these vigorous training sessions, you know. Mm -hmm. This kid can take pounding. Listen, he's got an ankle, sorry, he's got, yeah, he's got an ankle that is a heavyweight middleweight, his cousin, that spars with him. Isaac can take anything you throw at him. You get me? So I'm telling you, listen, he's going to walk through Jesse Magdaleno. Any missile Jesse Magdaleno throws, we're going to walk through it and we're going to take his ribs out, you know, and this guy's going down. I, 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 see, come 14th of April, yeah. you really know and the world is going to know who Isaac Dogbe is really is. That sounds good. It sounds great. It's great promotional stuff. But champ. You see, um, every, everything my father says, we've been able to back it up. That's, a, that's, a, that's the most important We can't thing. doubt that. You've yeah. done it. You've backed it up. You know, and he sees to it that we back it up. Mm -hmm. I keep saying, you know, my training sessions are much difficult than the fights that I've had. Let me stop you there, because you know you talked about this, you're training early on, you're upstairs, you're talking to the young people, inspiring the young people of Brixton, the footballers there, the young footballers who are asking you questions about you as a champion. Talk to us about that moment there, you were just talking to those young people, inspiring them. When that was going on, you were talking about your training, and how you train six days a week, or seven days a week? Six. Elaborate a bit more about that. You know, um, you know it's always great to, to inspire the next generation. Because I will tell you from the bottom of my heart, some people have made some bad decisions that I'm regretting right now. And if it wasn't for my, if it wasn't for my father in my life, I don't know where you know, I would be today. Because you know, people do things when they are young and then they regret it when they, when they get old. Mm -hmm. you know, um, when I first started boxing, what my, what my father said to me was, look, it's either you do it the hard way or you don't do it at all. You know, and, He's, he gave me five years to see where I was going to be and see where my peers are also going to be. In about three years, three years, three years I went to the Olympics. Three years of me boxing, I was in the Olympic Games. You know, to me, it came like as a prophecy. I had no clue about, you know, I was thinking, uh, look, I just started boxing, you know, but he had a vision. So, of course, the most important thing is listening. If I, I listen to my father and, you know, everything is going well with me. So that's, you know, the, the most important thing is that now most of the young people, they are growing so fast, you know, that you can see a little kid and you think that how the person talks, you think that it's an old man, you know, but an old man, a low child body. You know, but look, the most important, like I said, is listening. You know, old man, that's the most important thing. And um, 
Yeah, I train five days in a week. We cover, we try to cover, we try to, we cover seven to eight hours of training in a day, you know, spreading out like in, um, in free sessions, you know, during the day and, and stuff like that. And um, on the sixth day, I just do one session and then that's it, I rest. Um, like I train in the morning on a Saturday and then rest throughout. Wow. And then Monday, we start again. I mean, it's a commitment. Mm -hmm. You know, my father, he's an, he's an ex-military personnel. Ah. So everything has, to, everything has to be directed in that way. He says, Regimented look, instructed. you know, the, the military Regimented forces. <laughs> and so talk to me about regimented and structured. <laughs> so how do you make sure it's regimented and structured, but how do you ensure that he doesn't get, A, get bored, B, overtrain, and C, lose the best of himself in the gym and not be fresh for the ring? How do you do that as dad and as trainer? Well, like um, he, he, he was saying, you know, when, when, when you take the road, yeah, mm -hmm. when you take the road in boxing, mm -hmm. you have to always be ready because you can be called in two weeks or three weeks to fight. Right. How do you do that? So how the, 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 the main thing is you training vigorously, yeah, and also watching and listening to whoever you are training, yeah? And then when the fight come, you rest for two weeks or two and a half weeks. When you rest, that's when the energy and the strength and the healing, you heal the body and then your mind and everything, then you are strong. That's when you rest for the two weeks. Wow. So what we, what the plan we have here is using the special forces type of training. Mm -hmm. Strategy strategy mm -hmm. you have to be able to pass that mind you know break that pain barrier mm -hmm. you got beyond when you break that pain barrier you become like a, like a rock you know a rock walking or let's say a metal walking mm -hmm. you know, not, nothing like can stop you can stop you and nothing can even no you can't feel no pain like the titanium that they've got this with black panther <laughs> isn't it <laughs> wakanda forever yes <laughs> no, so, so like he said you see everything is is from the mind mm. you know endurance this kid trains non-stop and could you believe we don't even have great sparring partners you know but we still go through these guys like knife in a battle. But is that not key that you need top sparring at this level in boxing? I mean, that's only a question thrown yeah. out there. Well, I will tell you, he trains with his uncle that has never boxed before. His uncle is a natural fighter. Yes. Um, his, his cousin is a natural fighter. I'm a natural fighter too. Mm -hmm. So we, we three get in the ring and fight, you know, as yeah. sparring. And sometimes his junior brother, at the 13 years old, but he's a southpaw. So sometimes when we fight him, like now we're fighting Jesse Magdaleno. Yes. We have um, Josiah Dogbe, you know, standing with Isaac and training. See, it's not, when Isaac was young, about, let's say, 19 years old, mm -hmm. when he was in college, I think 18 when he was in college, remember, he was Carl Frampton's number one sparring partner. Mm -hmm. And Barry McQuigan then used to let me, like, call me to, oh my God, Paul, all these sparring guys, all the sparring partners are all gone. They don't want to spar him. Um, the champion that is um, Carl Frampton knocks all his, his sparring partners out. Then they'll call me and I call my son when he's on break, like 12, 11 something, I go and call him, pick him up from school, take him to the sparring session, and then we go and spark Carl Frampton. Oh my, this guy is a warrior, Frampton. My son stands his ground with Frampton when he was young. You know, so, and then he goes back to college, I take him back to college with no marks. And this is a heated, sparring in the middle of the ring, toe to toe. He done that for two years with Frampton. And then again, when we went to America, we were called again to spar Leo Santa Cruz. Mm. How was that? At that time, Isaac was six and oh. Leo Santa Cruz was a world champion. We go in there again, toe to toe. They couldn't shake Isaac Dogby's foundation. And then we went to spar Jesse Magdaleno when he was 20 and oh. At that time, Isaac was 6 and 0, and Magdaleno could not shake Isaac's foundation. So Magdaleno knows what is coming at him. That's what I'm telling people. 
Magdaleno is going to get <laughs> guy, out. <laughs> that's, why, that's why he went to Mexico for six weeks. And, that, and, then then you, training camp. and then you, he went to Mexico for six weeks training camp. They said high attitude, right? And then Isaac Dobe knocked out Cesar Juarez that was born in Mexico, trained, had all his life in Mexico, he, he trained in Mexico for all these times, and he came to Ghana, and Isaac knocked him out in round five. So you, having all these chocolates in Vegas, and then uh, these ice creams and that, you know, going to Mexico for six weeks, thinking that you, you've gone to train in a high attitude, and then coming to fight Isaac Dogme, you are in big trouble, man. He's in big trouble. He's um, in big trouble. See? Terrence Crawford and Jeff Horn and myself and Jesse Matelano. Has it, is it, has it been confirmed that Pacquiao is still fighting on our knockout? Maybe. Okay. Maybe. And you know, Pacquiao is a legend. You know, Pacquiao is a legend. Crawford. And Terrence Crawford. Oh, come on. what a legend. You know, and he is the pound world, pound. The, the world champ, the BBA world champion in Japan. Yes. You know, look, it's it's, it's a great opportunity. Absolutely. You know, to be on the honor card of this great bill that yes. Top Rank yeah. has put together. Right. And being te um, televised by ESPN pay per view. Wow. Look, it's been great. We conquered Africa. Okay. And now we're taking it global. That's the it. Africans are coming. <laughs> <laughs> the Africans are coming. Is it the Africans, Africans or is it dog, the dog birds are coming? The, the, the Africans, Africans are coming. <laughs> The Africans, the Africans are, coming. are coming, yeah, back by the British. So the how, how about that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the African British are coming. <laughs> the African British are coming. <laughs> <laughs> back by the British, so it's going to be a hell of a night. Um, when you look back and you think to yourself, well, this is where I was, this is where I'm going to be, do you ever think like, oh, wow, look how far I've come? Or do you think, or does that give you the faith to think, I've come this far, damn, I could go even further? You see, what, what comes to my mind is that, to me, how I see things is that it's like my life has been, has been divinely planned, mm -hmm. if it makes sense. Yes. You know, so for me, how I see it is I'm just walking in a path and every obstacle that comes in my way, you know, God sees me through it. Yes. And each and every day, I'm very grateful. I feel I am blessed, you know, to God. You know, for every opportunity, for every, for every um, victory, for every on every blessed day, I'm very thankful. And you look, most of my, my all, all my fights I've had in all the fights, all the shows we've had in Ghana, you know, and um, we've always had the support of the British High Commission, mm -hmm. all the diplomatic corps yep. from the US. Um, embassy, um, British Embassy, most of the government officials are always present, you know, backing me fully. The president. You know, the president of Ghana, the former, the, the ex presidents of Ghana. Wow. You know, we, we have, Walker. you know, um, the British ambassador, Ian Walker, you know, and, um, you know, the US ambassador, you know, um, Excellency Mr. Johnson. Look, it's, it's great. I have the like I said, we've conquered Africa. You know, we I'm a draw card in Africa. We've been able to, um, you know, gather that fan base over there. And yeah. right now is the right is the right time to, to take it global. And we are starting from Great Britain. You know, we are back home. You know, to gather the momentum. And it's like, uh, you know, Great Britain to the world. Hello. Let's get the Brits behind you. Yeah, of course. Let's get Ghana behind you. Let's get the world behind you. That's how it goes. Final word with you, Dad. Well, as Isaac has said it all, we're going to Vegas to knock a formidable opponent out, Jesse Magdaleno. Magdaleno, please, you have to be ready. Or just vacate the title peacefully and then move up weight. But make sure you make the weight because this guy Isaac that is coming is like a locomotive, yeah? Or we say, he, okay, he's like a locomotive that is coming down a steep hill. Bro, we know you're gonna run, but make sure you put on, you have the three cojones and fight like a true Mexican warrior. Don't fight like a chicken. Please don't fight like a chicken. Fight like a true Mexican warrior. Message to Jesse, he's, looking, he's watching you now, down the camera, message to him.
after I beat you, just don't make no lame excuses. You know, that's how it is. That's what I'm going to say. Isaac Royal Stone Dugway, the warrior of Africa, the pound for pound king. Look. First pay per view. First pay per view. Superstar Swing ever to come out of Africa. Superstar ever to come out of Africa. Jesse, I'm coming for you, baby. The Africans are coming. The British are coming. We are all coming. This is my time. This is our land. The new Black Panther is coming. <laughs> Wakanda forever. <laughs> We're coming to get you. Just, just, just like, you look, like my father said, just make the wait, you know. Because I know for some reason, you know, um, Amigo, can, can, can he see me? In oh. Amigo, yeah. <laughs> so like we said, just make the wait. We're coming. April 14th, just be prepared. I say, Dugbe, I'm coming with the whole clan, the warrior clan. We're coming to take you out straight.